First, cut and punch all the profiles according to the cutting list. If using a clipping bead, put the FE11 gasket into the full length of the bead and the sash before cutting. There are many different threshold options for the bifold. The standard threshold, which can be drained for concealed drainage with the 8mm holes all the way through the thermal break. Or it can be face drained with the 5mm slot through the two skins of the face and one skin through the thermal. We also do an integrated sill which is pre-drained on the inside and then all we need to do is drill 5mm holes in the nose of the sill for the drainage. We also do a low rise threshold and internal door threshold options. Step 2 is to route all our holes for the locks and spindles and shoot bolts. All of these measurements are in the fabrication manual. When the doors are routed, place them in order and then we need to put the hinge plates in before we put the sashes together. Four hinge plates need to go on each side. For an open indoor, start by putting four in the inside and for an open outdoor, four in the outside of the door. This door is an open out, therefore we follow this pattern. For opening this pattern would be opposite and with any more doors just repeat the same pattern throughout. When putting the sashes together, one chevron goes in the bottom slot on each bar. With the sash cleats, the holes are offset to the outside of each sash. That's the same for each sash. The cleats are in the heights just for demonstration purposes. Silicone around each mitered edge of the sash profiles before assembling. To put the sashes together it's easier to have the cleats in the widths so they can just be slipped in and make sure that your chevrons sit in the slots properly. Repeat with all sashes. Now we need to screw the corners together. Put the screws in the holes. These screws pull this bar that way and these screws pull this bar that way. So we need to equal this corner up. If after adjustment you still have a little step, this can be tapped lightly to line the corner up. For the next section we need to add the lock add-ons for the lock strip and the sash extensions on the bottom of each sash. First of all we add the lock add-ons with the small leg towards the thermal break and make sure it is flush to the ends of the sash. Once you've put the first screws in make sure these add-ons are still flush to the ends of the sash. If not they can be tapped back into place with a mallet before putting the remaining screws in. For bottom sash extensions, these can be screwed on at an angle through the bottom, or the easiest method is to put a 9mm hole through the top with a clearance hole through the bottom. Also we need to take the tops off on the punch tool to cover this and each corner needs nipping off so it hooks into the sash properly. Put these on, hook into place and screw through, repeating the same for the bottom. The other sash extensions just need the ends nipping off before screwing in. We can now put the gearbox together. Start by removing any tape from behind the handle so we don't trap it. Place the gearbox in. There are holes on this side so the side with no holes faces inwards while the side with holes faces outwards. Feed the handle through and screw into position. 
We now need to put the M10 threaded rod into the hole, line it up with the gearbox, screw into the gearbox, nip it up tight with grips and repeat on the other side. With the threaded rods in place, these can now be cut. The rods should be sticking out from the ends of the sash and the sash extension by 23mm on the top and bottom. Once your threaded rods are cut to length, screw the bullets on. Screw all the way to the end until the rod is flush with the end of the bullet and the flat part of the bullet is pointing towards the thermal. Then put the shoot bolt guide into place. Repeat this with the top screwing into place. With the shoot bolt guides in place, you can screw the gearbox cover over the top to neaten it up. Now we've done the shoot bolts, we can attach the access door locks. Put the lock strip and the handle in place and remove any tape from the area on both sides. Thread the spindle through the handle and the sash and screw in from the inside door. Put the lock barrel in, external side to the outside. Then screw the lock strip to the sash. Now we have the locks in place, we can apply the hinges to the bifold. Loosely put the first hinges on the bottom and fix into place 74mm from the bottom of the sash extension or 50mm from the bottom of the sash to the bottom of the hinge. For the top hinge, this should be 48mm from the edge of the sash to the top of the hinge. For the middle two hinges we can do the same thing making them equidistant from the top and bottom hinges. Repeat this entire process with the next sash. For an open out door you need this pull handle which will go on here. If the door is an open in, a single sided pull handle will be attached here with a single hinge plate. Remember to add this before the sashes are together and another hinge would need to be attached here. Lay the next door on top, making sure that the outside face is on top and the outside face is underneath. Screw the hinges into place loosely. Line the doors up with a straight edge, making sure that all four sash extensions are touching the straight edge. Then tighten the hinge screws. Repeat the same measurements for the wheels and guides, 74mm from the bottom of the sash extension to the hinge plate of the wheel and 48mm from the top of the sash to the hinge plate of the top guide. Again making sure that the middle two hinges are equidistant. Tighten all hinges and repeat the process with the next door and any other successive doors. Insert the sash extension inserts into the ends of the sash extensions on both sides. With the mullion gaskets, the small side needs to go towards the thermal. Apply this gasket along all sides of each sash, making sure to gasket up to the end of the wheel housing, not to the hinge plate. Cut the ends of the gaskets like so to make it sit neatly onto the sash extensions.
fix and tighten the grub screws into each hinge. Drill or route your drainage slots into the frame, then we can add the track. Cut the track from the top of the mitre to the top of the mitre, pushing it into place. Slide four hinge plates into the profile. If this door had a sliding post, we will be putting wool pile in here before we put the door together. Apply the chevrons to the sides. The hole is in the centre of the cleats this time, so it doesn't matter which way around they go. Place two into the ends of each length of the profile and repeat the process on the other side. Before putting the frame together, silicon the entire circumference and make sure to fill any chamber where there is drainage. Fix the frame together and screw each of the corners making sure to line up the edges. Apply a flipper gasket around the upstand of the frame cutting the ends at 45 degrees. Lift all of the sashes into the frame and fix the hinges loosely. The sashes should be fixed approximately 31mm from the outside edge of the frame to the gasket on both sides so that the sashes are equal within the frame. Once these measurements are correct, you can fix the hinges firmly into position. Apply a gasket in between each hinge. Remove the wheels, fold the bifold into the frame and replace the wheels before closing the traffic door. Screw the keeps and rebate to your traffic door and your bifold is complete.